Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you a package for mocking and testing HTTP traffic called GOC. So what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be working on a tool that I built, a simple one using the Open Weather API. It's a CLI and we're going to be testing specifically a function that is included in the main package. Now, to give you an idea what is the Open, Open Weather API, uh, it consists, as you may imagine, an, of a, an API that gives you weather information. Because we're using the free tier that I, I mean, if you want to run this locally, I highly recommend you to go and sign up, create an account, and just create a token. With that token, it will give you access to uh, this free plan then that it allows you to use the API that we're going to be using in the CLI, which is this current weather API. Specifically, we're going to be using the JSON output that if you notice is right here. And more specifically, we're going to be using the zip code um, arguments or options. Um, the way it works is that the API itself, it receives a zip code and the app ID, but it also allows you to specify the units and the and that's basically what it is. So you can indicate the standard, which should give you Kelvin values, metric, which are metric values and imperial, which are, you know, the Fahrenheit and metric are Celsius. So this is how it is. So you go to your uh, API keys. I'm going to be using this one, which by the time you see this video, it will be gone forever, but for reference, um, it's right here. So let's jump into the code and see how this thing works. The code is on GitHub. The link is in the description. So feel free to check that out. Clone the repo, play with it, and make sure to create, you create your own open weather API. Not the open weather API, but more your open weather account. So you can use the API that they give you and the free plan and whatnot. So the code itself is really pretty straightforward. I want to show you quickly the way it works is that you uh, receive or rather the CLI receives three arguments, app ID, zip and units, which are the things that I just told you back, um, you know, a few minutes ago. And then it literally just requests the API using, as you may imagine, uh, the standard library using the HTTP, the net HTTP package. It passes in the parameters and then it parses the values that we expect as a JSON and then prints out in you know in a standard output the result that's basically what it is so if you run this it should you should see that i'm getting in you know in beverly hills is getting 20, 90 not 90 54 uh fahrenheit if i go and change this to something like metric which should give me celsius um it will be a little bit different it will be 12 12 celsius and it says that it's broken clouds and the funny thing is that it was a scattered clouds just a while ago so you know it is what it is if i look at the test well there are a few things that i want to call out about gok gok is um according to the readme and i can tell you for sure because i've been using this package for a while it's not go routine safe so when you're using gok or rather when you're using yeah when you're using gok in one of your tests make sure you don't use t parallel, not not t parallel, but rather the parallel method in any of your tests. So right here, if you notice, I'm not calling t parallel, and if I scroll down to my subtests even more, I'm not calling t parallel anywhere here. And the reason is that it, is, like I said, it's not go routine safe. If you call t parallel, you will get these random errors that the tests don't pass even though you know for sure they're written correctly so you just don't forget about that it's, it's really important that, that you don't call t a parallel in the tests with that being said let me show you the the coverage of the code as you may have guessed already main is not tested in the context of this video and this example I will be covering main in, in different videos, but for this, uh, what I'm going to show you is that this function called request weather is covered 100%.
And this is because I'm testing all the different path, paths that I have. And, and I, I, I know which one are the expected errors according to the in, the in the case of the standard library and also in the case of the results that are coming from the open web API. Okay. So if we look at the actual structure of the tests, the way I like uh, implementing the tests when using GOG is that there is some sort of a initialization or let's call it initialization slash cleanup that happens to include the um, these three functions for enabling networking and also triggering the the uh, mocks that were not called which is this go this cog of all and also disabling networking which uh, it will allow us to to trigger um, errors in case we're trying to connect to something that is not being mocked by cog um, the structure that i like having is having an input and output and some sort of a uh, that those those structures indicate that the the inputs the input arguments and the output results that are coming from the function the functions we're trying to test so if we go down here the subtests actually or rather the test use the the, the table driven um, structure that is usually recommended when when writing go code and they follow uh, they use those structures that i define above as fields that then the end we use for testing the whole thing so if you notice in here and if you look at line 39 to line um let me go down it will be 71 right here all of these it's a single test an important bit about this is that because we are passing in different query arguments we can actually mock the requests using those parameters and this is sort of like cheating kind of but really this is useful and it, it it depends on the api that you're trying to test there are cases where perhaps it's the same endpoint and it doesn't change the query arguments don't change so you may need to look at different packages for testing in those cases okay so i will be covering those in a different video for, for now because I'm passing in different app IDs, I can actually mock different requests using the GOG package. One of the cool things about GOG is that not only it only it doesn't only allow you to load data from a file, like in the case of a fixture. I have a fixture right here that is literally the output that is coming from the Open Web API. But it also allows you to use this function, this method called uh, body string or body, depending on, on what you are trying to use. If you want to use a string or maybe an I or reader, or even you can use a map. And those also work as well. So you have some flexibility right there if you're trying to, to test different uh, or rather mock different outputs, depending on the things that you have available. And at the same time, it also allows you to do the opposite when doing the request. You can actually pass in a file, you can pass in a map, you can pass in a literally body string or an, an IO reader, depending on your options. So this is the, the thing that it literally does the 200. And if I do, I want to show you how it looks like if I scroll down all the way to uh, right here. If I go save and cover this, what is going to happen is that it's only covering the happy path. It's not covering anything outside of what I was testing uh, in the subtests or what I was trying to test, what I was trying to th to cover when with my tests, which is literally just the 200. If I go down and I say, you know what, let me try the 500, right? Let me try the 500. Um, let me do something. I made a mistake right here. So if I test the 500, which is this 219, you will notice that, okay, it's trying to make a request. It's going to give you an internal error, which in this case, what is going to happen is that it's going to test the case that is inside right here. Okay, so let me do this again. If I run the test, okay, so let me run the test. If I do, it will cover 
this section so with the tests i have right here i'm trying to when i'm building and implementing tests what i'm trying to do is go one by one to see if i'm actually covering all the use all the all the test cases another example that i have right that i have right here will be to cover and this is complaining because you know i made a mistake that is actually not going all the way down here oops um I made a mistake again. If I scroll down, you will notice just notice right here, right here. Um, it will look, and this should be edited. It will notice that this 401 is testing the uh, unauthorized, and more importantly, it's actually testing the message that is coming right here. So if I run this it will be covering that section okay and i think you get the idea of with what i'm trying to 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 explain right here is that um when i'm implementing and that's my personal choice when i'm implementing tests i like going um, and making sure all the paths are covered according to my tests and again going back to the actual package that i'm describing that here is that it allows you to mock any request using http and if we go back everything will be green again so this is one of the things that like using gog is one of those packages that is really cool you can you can use it with any http based api there are other options like for example recording the output and whatnot and i will be covering those in different videos but if you're API is of your implementing an API that happens to be HTTP based and you need to make sure that the, that the data that you're receiving and data that you're sending it's correct in the context of the tests and the context of your logic you, you need to check out this this package because it's really really useful and with that being said I want to tell you you know thank you for watching and and I hope you learned something new or if not just let me know <laughs> and as usual just keep it up and you know don't give up i will talk to you later in a different video so you know stay safe and you know goodbye